Okay, so in our last video, we created our certificate and our private key, and we put them together in a keystore.p12 file that we saved on the desktop. I've actually gone ahead and put them in a new folder called PDF underscore sign underscore resources, but you can put them in whatever folder you want. And I've got a test PDF called minions.pdf. This PDF was retrieved from the PDF lib website which is here, so this is the one we're using to test. And this library is really useful for creating and modifying PDFs in JavaScript. So let's go ahead and sign our PDF. Now, before I continue, I wanna say all the code I'm going to use and show off in this video is here in my repo. I will put a link to it in the description, but also the actual heavy lifting of signing the PDF will be done by this node sign PDF. So I won't go into too much detail about how this does it, but just to let you know, if you want to know more about it, go ahead and visit this repository, which I'll put in the description of this video as well. Apologies for the noise outside. It sounds like one of my neighbors is cutting their grass, but hopefully that won't interfere too much with the explanation that I'm going to give. So I'm going to hop over to my text editor or my IDE, which is Visual Studio Code. And I've already written the codes to sign the PDF. I'm just going to explain exactly what the code is doing so that if you want to manipulate my solution for your own needs, you can go ahead and do that. So first let's sign the PDF. I've got an absolute path to the PDF I want to sign, which is the minions PDF and a path to my certificate private key combination called the keystore.p12. So I'm going to run this code and show you the signed PDF. So let's do that now. I'm going to get a terminal in VS code and run the following commands, npm start. So now this has created a PDF called exported underscore file underscore 4908, which is here. I'm going to open that with Adobe Reader DC. The PDF is here. This is the minions PDF. It has a signature. So let's go into the signature panel and see that it's been signed by Twitter, which is the certificate we made up last time. And I've also got this box here, where if you click on it, it will tell you more about the signature itself. Okay, so now let's minimize this and go through the code. Okay, I'm gonna go through the index, so the main bit of code first. This is what runs when npm start hits. So that actually runs the index.js. So this index file takes the PDF and the certificate or the private key and certificate combination. It will put them in this variable and run this sign PDF method. So this, this method will do the actual signing of the PDF. And then after that, it will export the file with this name. So exported underscore file, this can be whatever you want. And this number is here to randomize the file. So we can run the command as often as we want without worrying about giving it a new file name. Once that's done, it will export the file using the FS write file sync method and then console log the new file name. So that's it. That's all this index.js file is doing. Now, if we dig deeper into the sign PDF class, which is the class that I've created, this is doing a lot of stuff. Firstly, it's getting the arguments, so the PDF file and certificate and putting them into global variables that can be accessed by any method in this class. Then once we've done that here, we run the sign PDF method, which is this. So what this function will do, it will add the signature placeholder and then do the actual signing. Now, like I said before, the heavy lifting part of the signing is done by node sign PDF. So if I scroll up, you'll see this signer is from node sign PDF and the sign method is also from that same library. So that's doing the signing with the new PDF, which has the placeholder and the certificate, which has been passed in already in this class. And that will return this as a buffer. I'm not gonna to talk too much about buffers and streams in this video, but if you want to know more about it, I'm sure there are loads of resources out there to help you out. Okay, let's talk a bit more about this add placeholder function. And before we continue, I'm gonna say a lot of this code here was not written by me. I have a high level understanding of what it's doing, but I don't know much about the details. If you want to know more, I've put a link here to where this code came from, and I will just show you in the browser. This code was written by Hopding, who is the creator of PDF lib. Okay, let's go back into VS Code and just run through what it's doing. So this is loading the PDF that we've passed in. There's an argument up here. I'll grab that, 
it'll put that into a variable and then locate the byte range of the PDF we've loaded in with this PDF array custom with context method. Then we have the signature length as 3322, which will be the placeholder length of the PDF signature. And here we'll get all the pages. So now we've got the byte range, we can put our placeholder byte range into the PDF. We have a section here for where the signature will go, and that is added into the context of the PDF. Then we put together the widget of our signature. Now this widget is the box I was showing you here, and it's calculated with these coordinates. Now this is the width and the height of the box, so the size you want the box to be. And this is the X and Y coordinate, I believe, of the top left-hand corner, but I'm not 100% sure. So now we have this, we can, of course, reference the signature that we want this widget to link to. And if we want, we can put a name here of our widget, but we don't have to. Finally, we have the position. So we have the page we want the widget to be on. This PDF only has one page, so it goes on to page zero, but if you have a lot, you can set it to page one or two or whatever. And these pages, of course, were loaded up here. So now we have the widget, we can put it into our PDF with this line, and then we set the widget here as an annotation to the first page again. Finally, we save the PDF here as bytes. So this is the PDF with the placeholder signature in it, and we pass in the option not to use, use object streams. This is to support newer PDFs, and I've got a link here going to the GitHub thread explaining why this has to be false. And once we have our PDF as bytes, we convert them into a buffer because the sign PDF method, so the signer sign, accepts a buffer and not bytes, so it has to be converted or this wouldn't work. Okay, I hope I've made some sense of that. I hope you've got a better understanding of how PDF signing actually works with JavaScript. And before I go, I just want to quickly glance over this file. So the PDF array custom, this is imported into here. And the reason that this file exists is so that we can change the look of the byte range. So by default, this PDF array that is imported from PDF lib creates an array that looks like this for the byte range, and this is not correct. So the creator of PDF lib has actually gone ahead and made this custom array to modify the array output to look like what the PDF expects. So I didn't write this code myself. I copied and pasted it from this URL, which you're welcome to look at, but that's why this file exists. Okay, and that is pretty much it. That's what the bulk of the code is doing, and that's how the PDF is actually being signed in JavaScript. Before we end, let's just create a new file to see it working again. There we have it. So our file has a suffix of 3698, and let's grab that from here load it in Adobe again, and voila. Our PDF has a signature signed by Twitter, and that is how simple it is. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments. Like I said before, I'm not an expert on this, but I'll do my best to help. If you enjoyed this video, I make videos every Thursday talking about web dev and game dev. So subscribe, stay tuned, and I will hopefully see you in the next one.